I am in the middle of a boulder field here at Combe Quarry and I'm walking the course ready for tomorrow's race which is round two of the British Extreme Enduro Championship here at Combe Quarry. So walking the course basically gives us a better idea of working out what line we want to put ourselves and our motorbikes through. It is an Extreme Enduro which means technical is definitely part of the game here. If we have a look around, there is hills, rocks, boulders, even some water, and hopefully the rain isn't gonna come in tomorrow morning. I'm gonna keep walking. <sighs> Okay, Fast Eddie are the track organizers for this, and they basically set up the course to really challenge us. We're doing the AM race, there's also a PM race, which is a little bit harder. But basically, they give you different options online. So if we take the hill behind me, we've got some options. We could cut in straight away off the rock bed and go up the steeper part of the hill. Now that's gonna be the faster line. So if you're looking to do really well and place timing, that's probably a good option, but you have got the harder hill. The other line is coming here, having a little bit more of a space and a run up, and going up the slightly rockier, but a little bit less steep option. We've got a really good example here of the difference between the AM and the PM race. So the PM race is designed to be a little bit more on the amateur, not necessarily novice, because this is hard enduro, but the less experienced extreme riders. And then you've got the PM race, which is more the pros, the experts. So here we have a little sign that says PM race this way and AM race that way. But the AM races can go that way as well. The PM race is a straight line through the middle of the rocks and the AM race is a horseshoe through the little boggy bit, which it is definitely an easier line through the rocks but it's certainly gonna lose you some time. So I'm gonna have a look and see if I can pick a route through the PM line that I might be able to survive and buy me a little bit of time. What do we reckon? Okay. Oh, that looks pretty good. We've got to ride down that. I'm gonna have nightmares tonight. Okay, so we're gonna ride along here. Doo -doo -doo. Up this hill. Huh. And up that. <sighs> Yikes. It is looking like an absolutely wicked track. I'm a little bit terrified, but incredibly excited for what tomorrow brings. At the moment, it is dry as well. But you'll see, but look at this stuff. Riding motorbikes through a granite quarry. What better way to spend a Saturday? Right, we have walked the course. Rocky Monster's here. This is our, it's really dark, sorry. We're in our little Mercedes camper van and we're going dinner on. We've got some pasta and ravioli with some sausage and pesto, sweet corn, pre-race fuel. And then we're gonna get the bed out, head to sleep and hopefully wake up to a dry day tomorrow for the main race. It's looking like it's going to be very, very heavy rain. I'm going to do my best not to have nightmares about the elements of the course that I have walked. I'm just gonna take it five meters at a time and try to enjoy it till tomorrow. We are hiding away in the trailer because it has started raining outside. Hopefully it's gonna just pass and we're gonna have clear skies for the actual race. Right now we're getting our race numbers on, transponders on. So the transponders are a little electrical thing that goes on your front forks. And that basically transmits signal and it enables the organizers to count how many laps you do. Um, and the whole idea of the race is we've got a two hour window and we need to do as many laps as possible. It is time to kit up for the race. Now, every rider is different in what they choose to wear for protection. With my history and my body being slightly reconstructed, I choose to go for as much protection as I possibly can, which means I wear full knee braces, impact shorts, full body armor, a lot of kit. Let's get it on. Oh, 
knee braces on. Yeah. Ready, Anna? You're right. Yeah, it is. You have a coffee delivery. It's a good husband. Thank you. So we're nearly kitted up. Got my feet next. She's still wet from the last ride. I don't have a helmet, some gloves, and it does look like a lot of kit and a lot of effort putting it all on. But in this kind of terrain, it's the difference between a little tumble being a little tumble or a bit of a break. So now, kit wise, I'm ready to race. I've just got to sort my mind out and get ready to race. Okay, we're on the start line. This is the bit I absolutely hate. I um, wonder what on earth I'm doing. Want the earth to open up, eat me, take me away, because it's terrifying. <laughs> so try and stay calm and survive. <laughs> Loads of stuff to catch you out. I had a few arguments with some giant boulders in rock beds. 
had a couple of big offs, including one that took the GoPro out. Uh, hopefully, we'll have some good footage of me going into the rock. I really, really enjoyed that. I was proud of myself for being a little bit more bolshy. I did some overtakes. I did a proper, like, almost road over someone to get past because they were falling over, which apparently I should be proud of. Um, I am just absolutely buzzing. It's time to change, maybe get some of the mud off my face, probably our muddy, and watch the PM race where we're going to see the likes of Billy Bowl and Graham Jarvis showing us how you're meant to ride that stuff. <laughs> opened right on the start of the PM race so they are going to have a seriously hard time because not only are they battling some extra bits of terrain that we didn't do they are also battling the weather and it is really coming down right now and um, they're already round to the rock garden which is right by the start line this is a section where I definitely had a little bit of um, manhandling of my bike and of course, these guys are making it look easy. There is absolute carnage up on the big main hill. I, uh, it's one of those hills where I just look at it and I still can't imagine the day that I'll be able to get up it. Um, and there's hundreds of bikes trying to get up there right now and it's really coming down in the rain so that's going to be a wet slippery hill Whew. so you might not be able to see it but here we've got billy coming through the rock garden and he is barely even slowing down now those rocks and boulders are huge like bigger than tractor tires so he's going up the hill he's going to pop out on the top here and then we're going to see him coming down towards us there he is go billy billy is making it look easy look taking the harder line but the shorter line keeping the time down nice flying up there through the mud the rock garden wow yes billy bow legend that was amazing to see billy just like picked his line where there were no shrapnel of bodies and bikes and he pinned it hips on the bars wiggled his way up wow it's incredible how much you can learn watching these guys. It doesn't mean I can now go and do that hill, but pinned it, he had that bike singing. It's under absolute carnage over on the big hill now. There is some spectacular falls, tumbles, fails and attempts to get up that hill going on. Wow, it's brutal.
Kai have taken a wander to the bottom of the brutal hill climb to give you a little bit more perspective on how ridiculously big it is. so there's going to be some tired bodies out there there's also some ruts and stones making these more and more tricky but of course Billy Bolt is still flying around like it's nothing <laughs> Marshall's up there. Spectators. Oh my gosh! Whoa! It is magical when, when you see them get up there. You can hear in their engine when they're quite low down whether it's likely they're going to get up. Those guys have it hit and singing. Right, I'm Vanessa, we go on the bike and this has been a day at the British Extreme Championship. It's an extreme race for a reason. Please do hit subscribe, tick the bell for notifications and check out my other